you know, I think I'm gonna make a YouTube video. I'll make a YouTube video. And I think it's gonna be about the stuff I used when I first started. The stuff that I used when I first started. That sounds so bad. It's gonna be about my gear. My first scope, my very first, well it's not really my first scope. This is my first scope. This is what started it all. Thousands of dollars later, thousands of cords later, thousands of hours later. I don't know how many brake checks watching YouTube videos while I drive down the road. Anyway, let's get started. My name is Steve Miller, and this is Entering Into Space, my YouTube channel um, that I've just started. And what I want to show you today is uh, an answer to a question that I see a lot, I read a lot in the Facebook groups that I'm in, the people that I um, show my pictures to, they want to go, hey, let me see that picture, what is that? And I explain it to them. So the question is, how do I get started? doing this? What do I buy? What do I get? How much do I spend? You know, I have a budget of $500. I have a budget of $1,000. Um, so this first video is like the bare essentials. It's bare bones. It's down and dirty. It's what I bought and what I'm going to show you coming up of uh, the essentials, the bare essentials that you need to get started taking long exposure astrophotography pictures. Um, to start with, I gotta say that this isn't how to do it. This is the way I did it. And I've since upgraded my mount. I'm still using this OTA, but I figured I'd strip it down and I'd show you and go through all the pieces and roughly the prices of each piece so you can look and see and maybe it'll help you get your first setup to start getting your first pictures. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you uh, a couple pictures that were taken with this setup. Um, one is the um, Rosette Nebula, which took me forever to find because I was star hopping. Uh, that's something else you're gonna learn how to do. And the Orion Nebula and Running Man Nebula together. This particular telescope at 750 millimeters frames that up pretty nice. So yeah, so hopefully this helps you guys and shows you guys what I did to get started. Um, so basically what this is, is a package deal that I got off of Amazon. Uh, the scope and the mount. This actually is a really good mount. It's a, it's a Celestron CG4. Uh, once you get it balanced, it tracks pretty good, you know, for a non-go-to mount. And this is the Celestron Omni XLT uh, reflector or Newtonian. It's a six inch diameter aperture 
at f5 with a 750 millimeter focal length. Uh, that's a good place to start. A lot of people say you want a, a, a wider field of view that's more forgiving, and I agree. Um, wider field of view means something down in the 480 to 500 millimeter focal length. Obviously, the longer the focal length, uh, the tougher it is to guide, um, the closer you are to the target. So I think this is a good middle ground because the galaxies aren't super small. You know, things like the Whirlpool Galaxy and M81, M82, they show up pretty good in the field of view. You can get them both in there. But you still get some good detail, but you're also able to capture a lot of nebulosities. It does crop out, obviously, the rosette and like North American Nebula it crops that out pretty good. So, but for me, it was a good place to start. So let's get into all the different parts and pieces of this and let's get this thing set up. So this is the Omni XLT-150 by Celestron. It is a Newtonian uh, reflector, which is one of the same. It does not have a dual speed focuser, but it does have a focus lock, which is very helpful. It's got a uh, finder scope crosshairs but I'm going to show you a little upgrade later to make this a little easier because you're having to basically get down and look through it at that angle. This is a package deal meaning I bought the scope and this Celestron CG4 mount for approximately $500. This is a 750 millimeter focal length which is pretty average. 150 millimeter diameter, which means uh, this right here, six inch. And it means it's an F5, which is pretty fast. Gathers a lot of light in a hurry. To add to that, I bought this Celestron three-speed motor system, and it replaced the handles that would have gone here for the right ascension and declination see they're just like little phone cable cords that plug in and they basically work to align and that's all they do they're super slow but once you get on your target manually then there are three speeds to track uh, the night sky and typically the fourth speed is the one you want to have it to uh oh and these are my stupid little letters that I taped on here so I knew which direction this mount moved in the winter time when I was on Orion. Another essential add-on to this setup that is crucial for long exposure is to add a polar finder scope. This setup didn't come with one. So I bought it uh, for approximately $50 to add into there. And you're gonna have to have this to be able to pull or align your mount accurately to Polaris or the Celestial North Pole so that uh, you don't drift when you're, when you're tracking or when you're guiding. Another piece of gear that's really important to have for these reflectors is a collimating eyepiece. This goes into the two inch focuser. And I don't know if you can see, you've got this, let's pull it out so you can see it. You've got this uh, right angle beveled bushing in here. Uh, this needs to face towards the light. So if you take your cap off, your OTA cap off, you wanna face this to where the light is coming in, which allows light to come into the scope bounce off the secondary mirror and up to the eyepiece. So looking through that eyepiece, you'll see a set of crosshairs in here. Center both your, the dot, what I mean by the dot, is you should see the dot on the center of the primary mirror. You just basically want that dot and the view around the secondary mirror to all be centered. Another fairly cheap and expensive item that I added uh, that really helps star hopping, which is what you're going to have to do until you get a go-to mount, is this Telrad. It was uh, approximately $46. I don't know why I keep saying approximately. 
and then the exact amount. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> you're gonna look through this portion here and what it'll do is right in the window here, it'll pull, put a reticle for you to line up on the star. And it's battery operated and I actually have a Velcro on here so I can move it from one scope to the other. So this is my already had it in the bag, Canon EOS XSI. It's a pretty low budget camera, but it served me well. And it is not Astro modified, meaning it does not have the IR cut filter removed. It is a stock camera. So with this, you'll need to purchase a camera adapter T-ring, an EOS T-ring. Uh, locks into place. And then the two inch nose ring or nose piece, a nose ring, <laughs> a nose piece. I don't have any nose rings. You'll see in a minute. Just threads in there and then it's ready to go into the focuser. So the two inch nose piece goes into the focuser. I like to slide it all the way up until it hits and then tighten down. But one thing you wanna remember though is you have the ability to be able to rotate the camera. So if you've got something in the frame that's not quite fitting or you wanna frame it up the same way, each night you can rotate the camera. But make sure that every night you try to remember or mark how you've rotated the camera. So that's less work for Deep Sky Stacker to have to do. So you wanna to try to get that the same every night. For the most time, most days, I like to just center it up, even with the bottom of this focuser here, and tighten the two screws down. And that is called prime focus. You are not shooting through an eyepiece. You've got light directly coming from your secondary mirror straight into the camera lens or the camera sensor. There is no lens. So now you've got everything hooked up. You've got the camera, you've got your mount set up, your scope set up. You've got to control the camera. Uh, it's a standard Android smartphone. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a camera app. It's called DSLR Control Plus. And this will remotely control your camera. And the way you're going to have to hook that up because you've just got basically a Android style charger port is typically most of the phones come with a USB to micro USB. So that plugs in. And then here's your extension cord. So USB goes in here. And with this, uh, Open this little flap and the cord's going to plug in right to the side. And so, yes, you're going to have to sit out here and hit the shutter each time, but you're not going to be vibrating it by fumbling around and touching the camera. And trust me, I've taken 50 or 60 shots hitting the button every time. That's where you got to start. So one of the upgrades that I made, um, that's really not essential, but kind of is, is the stock finder scope. You, to look through it, you really need it. I mean, you need to be able to center your target up. It does have the crosshair in it, but you're looking down like this, which here is fine, but when it's rotated around, you may be down on your knees. It's really hard to see. Um, and it's essential that you have the finder scope because you're gonna need it for star hopping. Um, and basically star hopping is using like Stellarium uh, to find a star, get the scope on it that's a known star, a bright star that's close to your target and then picking out a star pattern and slowly moving the telescope from one point to the next, hence star hopping, um, until you get to what you think is the target by constantly looking at a sky chart map like Stellarium on your phone and then looking back to the eyepiece. And you wanna make that process as easy as possible and as comfortable, the heck, as possible. <laughs> so 
what I did is I, I took this off and replaced it with this. It's the Orion uh, 9 by 50 right angle. It's got crosshairs in it. Um, and it's got the same shoe that fits right in. So now you're looking down into the eyepiece. I still use it. I still have it hooked up on my primary imaging rig. Um, still a very key part that uh, I think will definitely help you out if you're willing to spend, I mean, this was $80 from Amazon. So not a lot of money, but really does help you out. And anything that you can do in this thing at night to make your life easier, to make things more comfortable, um, you're really gonna enjoy because it's gonna make this whole experience in the dark more pleasurable. So I wanna give you an idea of uh, kind of what to expect with a setup like this, uh, without auto guiding, uh, with this mount, with this telescope and its focal length. Uh, this scope for me, at the best of my abilities, at 60 to 80 second sub-exposures, uh, I was yielding about 75%, which means 25% um, of the pictures that I took, I had to toss, either due to double stars or star trailing. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your satellites and airplanes that creep in there too. That's with anybody. But uh, reviewing the sub-exposures, typically, like I said, 25% of them I would have to throw away, which means I had to shoot a lot more. But honestly, I think that's pretty good for a setup like this. Um, obviously, later on down the road, when you get into auto guiding and better built mounts, um, you're going to start getting 95% somewhere in there. You may only have to toss them if you've got a satellite or a airplane that creeps in. Wait, did I end that right? I felt, I felt weird. Anyway. Anyway, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna normal, do I'm a curse, YouTube video. Okay, well do your YouTube video, but when you come and try to spy on me, I know you're gonna kind of have to give me a sign. If I just drop an F bomb, people have heard that before. You just beep it out. You have all those video, what you call it, editing techniques. Yeah, you just go beep.